Now, JVL Narsima Rao, the BJP's calculation was that Telangana could be the next Karnataka, the second gateway to the south. This data by Sea Voter, your one-time friend, uh, contemporary Yashwan Deshmukh, seems to suggest that the BJP, of course, is going up on a very low base, but the kind of gains that you were hoping for haven't spread much beyond the municipal area of Hyderabad. So you haven't grown across the state. You come from very near uh, Telangana. How much of a disappointment is this, that you had a certain amount of momentum at the time of the municipal elections, you thought you would build on it, from there, the BJP's campaign in Telangana hasn't really taken off. One and two, we can still squabble over. BJP at this moment seems settled into third place. No, Rahul, uh, uh, you see, every the polls have always found it difficult to predict Telangana because in 2014, post formation of Telangana, there was a uh, there was a huge uh, hype and hope that Congress would do very well because it gave Telangana and BJP supported Telangana. TRS campaigned for it, but really it was Congress, BJP, which delivered. But people of Telangana surprised uh, uh, surprised uh, political parties. In 2019 also, there was a big hype about Congress winning Telangana. It didn't come through. In 2019, nobody expected the BJP to register a threefold increase in vote share to about 20% and win four seats. So, therefore, Telangana voters have always surprised political parties. And this election is likely to be, it's a, a likely to be a hung verdict because TRS has substantially lost ground. And uh, we have considerably gained. With, with gains, BJP will convert them into seats because our votes are more concentrated. Even if you look at 2019 parliament election, we polled less than the Congress. We polled 19.7% and the Congress polled 25% in the Lok Sabha election. Yet, we won four parliament seats and Congress won only three. So, we have a favorable distribution of vote. So, even if the Congress were to get 30% and BJP were to get only 20% or 18%, we would still, we would still have uh, an advantage in terms of seats. So, we believe it could be it could it could turn out to be a hung assembly this time and bjp will certainly make big gains if not all over the state in in regions where we have a possibility of converting them into seat wins so certainly our our tally in the assembly okay. is likely to be significantly high and very impressive so you're saying your votes are concentrated and therefore even if the overall percentage looks low you're hoping for better seat conversion girija shetka uh, this data from uh, Yashwant and Seawater would surprise the Congress because while, of course, you think you're bouncing back an 11% uh, increase in vote share is arguably more than the Congress's internal polls are suggesting. Rahul, that is wrong. It is not a surprise for us. Actually, our internal polls are projecting more than what the Seawater is projecting. And it's not just a seawater. The own intelligence reports of KCR has suggested that he's going to lose if he selects the same candidates that he has selected before. But he has no options but announce the list prior. And they have nothing to go out and campaign there because their manifesto was released just very recently. And the manifesto is just a copy of Congress. If we say we'll give 1,000 rupees, they will say 2,000 rupees. They say Congress cannot do these guarantees, but apparently the BRS can. And what has stopped them from these 10 years to not deliver these guarantees? The second time, the people of Telangana believe that we need at least 10 years for the new state to do some development work. But after 10 years, they have understood that it's only the KCR's family that has developed all the sectors in the Telangana. There's highest employment, highest rural inflation, highest corruption here. There's no work going on. The people are here ready to throw this corrupt government, which has sucked the blood of Telangana here. And how are these people? They are going out for campaigning. They had an edge oh. for a month, but they are being welcomed with slippers, tomatoes and whatnot. They can't just go out without any security because they have no manifesto. And people are asking, did you deliver the two bedroom house? Did you deliver the Kaleshwaram project? They have not delivered KG to PG. There's so many flagship programs that have just been spoken about repeatedly over 10 years, but has not been delivered. 
The people of Telangana are not ready to believe this. Lies of KCR again and again. And this Congress is going to win at least 75% okay. of the votes of the seats here. So we are not surprised where you... Okay, so we've dealt with surprised. vote share. I now want to look at seat share. Remember, for anybody who tracks data, vote share is far more significant because this is actually de determined by how many people you speak to, what they're telling you about their voting preferences. So vote share is really the gold standard. Seat share conversions is where some uh, algos come into place, where science uh, has an element of art in it as well, and therefore you can squabble over seat shares. Uh, but for what it's worth, here are the sea voter projections for Telangana. This is what Yashwant and his team think the new Telangana Assembly could look like. The BRS's uh, seat share likely to crash from 88 seats to 49. That's a loss of 39 seats. That's a whopping, whopping uh, loss of seat share for the Bharatiya Rashtra Samiti. The BJP's seat share likely to go up from 1 to 8. That's 7 seats up for the BJP. The Congress, according to the sea voter data, uh, and remember, there are 119 seats in Telangana, so therefore you need 60 uh, to form the government. The, B, the C voter data suggests that the Congress could go from 19 to 54. So it still looks like a hung house, but the Congress at 35. And remember, if this data is correct, when you're still a few weeks away from the elections, it's possible that momentum builds in favor of the party that looks in front. That's the winner's bandwagon effect. Uh, so 54 is the projection for the Congress. Rajdeep Sardesai, given how far the Congress had fallen from 19, 35 seats up uh, at 54, Revant Reddy, uh, Sunil Konagulu and the others in Telangana uh, would be very, very pleased with these numbers. You know, as I said, Rahul, at the outset, you're giving them an early Pujo gift. Uh, the fact is that these numbers will give the Congress great hope, <laughs> certainly. But the truth, Rahul, is that it's, you know, there are two parts of this election which even these numbers are unable to predict. Because as you've seen, converting vote share into seat share is a nightmare in a state like Telangana because there are certain pockets of influence that all parties have. Northern Karnataka is a dominant area for the BRS. Uh, the Congress stronger in southern Telangana and there are two factors that I think are key. There are 27 seats between Scheduled Caste, Scheduled Tribe, 18 SC, 9 ST. I think those will be critical and there are 28 in Hyderabad city. Now, if the Congress doesn't do well in Hyderabad, remember about seven seats in Hyderabad are with the AIMIM of OAC. So OAC has already said I will uh, back KCR. So KCR starts with that advantage that he will probably get six to seven seats of Mr. OAC firmly with him. In the remaining seats of Hyderabad, the Congress, which was a poor third, uh, when there were municipal corporation elections in 2020, the BJP did reasonably well, very well, in fact, in that election. That will be the challenge for the Congress. Can you make a breakthrough in Hyderabad? Without that, I don't think the Congress can form a government. And can you sweep the SCST seats like you did in Karnataka? I think that these are the two factors that will, will be critical. There are pockets in Mahbub Nagar and Khamam, which the Congress in Nalgonda, which the Congress will do well in. There are pockets in, in Karim Nagar, other areas where the uh, BRS will do well. Hyderabad, I think, will be critical and the SCST seats. T.S. Sudhir made a point about anti-incumbency of MLAs and that's well taken. I think KCR may have missed a trick in not dropping more MLAs. At the same time, because he's given them the uh, early advantage by naming them, that's a, a, a small advantage to them. And don't forget the M factor, the money factor. This is a state where, like it or not, per capita, for what you gather from the ground, speaking to police officers, no other state has as much of money at stake quite like Telangana and neighboring Andhra Pradesh. So, do you have that cash? 50 well, maybe crore, Tamil Nadu crore? does. I have a different theory, Rajdeep. Maybe Tamil Nadu. On money, well, Tamil Nadu voters, will come in, my, in my assessment, they'll take the money and they'll go out and do what they want. So, the I'm money not, is just no, I'm not a so gift sure. that you get. The gift no, doesn't necessarily no, I, fully influence your sure. vote. No, no, but my only point is, you see, the cash comes in different points. It's not just the cash you get at election time, but over the last few years, when you've got cash in hand, through your Raitu Bandhu schemes, from your Dalit Bandhu schemes, all of this will be remembered at voting times. Look, it's not 
there's no uh, KCR has didn't win 2019 because he got Telangana for the state in 2014. He won it because some of those welfare schemes had resulted in cash in hand. And I think we've got to accept that, that that is going to be a factor. If that cash in hand uh, becomes a factor, I think KCR will have the edge. If the Congress can get its social coalition right, then the numbers that you're saying could happen. But I think it's still going to be a, a fight for the Congress to defeat an entrenched regional party like the BRS.